Okay guys, in the last video that I showed you, I had made a couple of really big mistakes and that's okay. I just wanted to let you know what the actual issues are. So if you look in the index, you'll notice that I'm just calling these dispatch methods directly. And that's not how it's supposed to be. Remember, we're mapping the dispatch to props. So whatever we do here, this function actually is dispatching something, but it is also getting mapped to a prop. So the right way to do this is to do this.props.load events and then this.props dot load featured events and at that point <clears throat> because you're defining these as props you obviously need to define them in the prop type so you're gonna do load events as a prop type stuff func and a load featured events prop types dot func so that was one mistake and then the other important thing that I wanted to point out is in the sagas so you can see that right now we're just directly loading these guys but that's not what we want. We obviously want to load um, the data based on the action parameters. So the tenant ID, the skip, and the page information that we were talking about needs to be passed to these methods somehow. So how do you do that? So what you do is instead of directly calling a put, um, let's say you, you load the saga. What it's basically doing is directly calling the load events, which would in here call an API and then get the results and then it would do a put load event success but you don't want to do that because you want to listen to the action um, and then when the action is triggered that's when you want to invoke um, this particular functionality so what you need to do is actually we can create a listen get listen for get events and then listen for featured events get featured events um, or you can simply call them as um, get or let's just call them load events and then load featured events and what we'll do is we'll, we'll change this so we won't put these in here instead what we'll do is in here we're gonna say yield and then you're gonna say there's a new thing um, new item that we'll have to a new method that we'll have to get here and it's called take latest essentially take latest what it does is for every time you want to give an action um, every time a given action is raised you want to do something so let's just say load events is the action that I want to do listen to and then every time that happens I want to go fetch events that's what I want to do so obviously I need to import this load events and uh, it looks like it automatically did that so let's build out a function and then do fetch events there. now the great thing about this is that you can actually take in the action right here and then you can use the action parameters use action params and call it yeah so we'll, we'll log a couple of these so you can see so we'll log action tenant id and we'll call this tenant id and then we'll also log the skip and we'll also log the tick Let's just lock these three. And then obviously here you call the API. And then once you get the data, that's when you'll do a yield. And then put of load event success. And then you'll pass it the events that you get from the API. That's the right way to do this. And likewise, so for load featured events too, we just get rid of this. And then what we would do is, hey, I want to yield and then I want to do take latest again and what I want to do is when it's load underscore featured events action that needs to be fired that's when I want to do fetch featured events and so in this case then I'll go and do function star fetch featured events and then action and then let's also log 
the same three things here so that we can see. So we can do a feature tenant ID, feature skip, feature take. And then in this case, once API is called and data is received, we would just do a yield put and then we would do load featured event success and then we would pass it featured events. Now, right now these are coming from the mocks, but they would ideally come back from the um, API call, which is pretty straightforward. I'll show you a pattern that we can use there too. So let me let me just go ahead and show that. So we would do a try and then we would do a catch error. Um, in the try, we would do this. And then if the call fails, we need to handle that gracefully too. So what we would do is put in a yield and then put load events error and then we'll put the error in there. So we also need to get load events error and then we would do a load featured events error and then we could replicate the same functionality in the fetch featured events. So you would do a try and then we do catch error and then these guys in there. And then we do yield put load feature events error and then we pass it the error. There we go. Okay, so there's a lot going on here, but there's nothing fancy. In here. All you're doing is making sure that if there is an error, you're passing that to the Redux state. And then we get rid of this, we get rid of this, clean it up a little bit. So now you have your two methods for, let's just keep them together. For load events, which is listening, um, and it's only going to take the latest. Let's say there is multiple actions that are fired for load featured events. You, you don't want to do it again and again. You just want to get the latest one um, for that action and just load it. Remember, this. Uh, there are scenarios where you will need to do every. For example, let's say you were loading a bunch of users based on their ID. In that case, the action may be load user by ID. Um, and there could be 20 users in a list and you may want to get all that information, in which case you may want to do a take every. But in this case, you can just get away by doing a take latest because you only need that information or whichever one the latest of that information. So that's why you do that. And yeah, hopefully this should just work uh, pretty easily. Okay, there we go. Um, so all we're doing is we introduce this yield all, which we'll call the load events, which will take latest, and then the take latest uh, we'll call fetch events, and then the fetch events takes in the action. We get all the parameters here. And so let's run this. And then I, I made one more change that I wanted to show you guys. So um, I got the props tenant ID in here. And how I got that is using a simple, simple selector. Uh, which I already had earlier on. All it does is gets the tenant information from the global state and then maps that to a prop called tenant, which I declared here. And then it just goes ahead and gets the ID and then it gets the information. So if I save this and refresh this guy, you should see it does dispatching action load events, introducer for load events, then you get the tenant ID, skip, take, and then it does load event success, and then it also has the featured tenant ID skip take, and then it has a, um, the properties that you need. The featured, I was actually doing a console.write for that. So that shows up right there. 
So all of this is good, and what I'm doing here is featured events. Let's just do a feature console.log. Essentially what I was doing is they don't have any values in there, you just show a blank slate view. But what you want to do is if this is equal to not equal to zero, in fact, this, the way I would do that is I would just put them in here. Um, I would do a featured events, and then I would do that, and then I would do event list, and I would do that, and then here I would do uh, featured events and something like that. Uh, so um, I'll have to look into that. I've forgotten this attack since, but the idea is you don't even want to render the featured events component if those featured events are not available. Okay, I think this looks good.